My name is Megan, and I'm an educator at History Miami Museum. Today I'm going to be talking to you about the history of diving and this diving helmet from the museum's collection. Let's start with the obvious question. What is underwater diving? Underwater diving is the act of descending below the Earth's surface. There are a lot of different reasons someone might do this. Maybe they drop something and they want to find it, or they're repairing an underwater portion of a bridge or a dock. It's possible that they just want to take a closer look at life under the surface. Underwater diving is difficult for humans for a few reasons. Most obviously, humans cannot breathe underwater. Another reason is pressure. Water is much heavier than air, so the pressure it places on our bodies is also much greater. Today, humans have developed many tools to help overcome these challenges. Underwater diving goes back thousands of years in human history. While ancient civilizations didn't have the technology that we have today, they were able to practice freediving without any tools. They usually did this to collect resources or to find lost items. Some examples of groups who practice freediving throughout prehistory are the Chinchoro culture from what is today Chile and Ama divers in Japan who collected pearls as early as 2,000 years ago. Today, freediving is still practiced as a sport and in some places for resource collection. The next major step in the development of underwater diving was the invention of the diving bell. These were essentially bells that were lowered into the water. And what was discovered was that the inside of these bells didn't fill with water. Instead, the air that had been in them at the surface remained underwater. The first record of the use of a diving bell was by Aristotle in the fourth century BCE. This technology improved over time and eventually engineers discovered how to pump air from the surface into the bells in order to replenish the supply and allow the divers to stay underwater longer. Let's take a look at how these actually worked. All you'll need is a bucket of water, a cup, and a dry paper towel. Crumple up your paper towel and stick it at the bottom of your cup. Press down really hard, make sure that it's very stuck down there. You can test this by picking up your cup and dumping it upside down, shaking it. Make sure that that paper towel isn't going anywhere. Then you'll bring the cup over to the bucket of water and slowly start lowering it down into the water. You'll want to submerge it completely underwater. And then after it's submerged, you can slowly start bringing that cup back up to the surface. Pull out the paper towel, and inside, it should be dry. The air stayed in that cup and kept water from coming in, just like with these diving bells. And that's why our paper towel here is completely dry. The earliest known version of a diving suit was designed on paper in the early 1400s. But the first suit that successfully used compressed air to allow the diver to breathe underwater longer wasn't created until 1772. From there, technology continued to improve to be safer and more efficient. It is still improving today. These improvements allowed people in the US to begin diving recreationally in the 1950s. People became widely interested in underwater diving in 1869 when the novel 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea by Jules Verne was published. This diving helmet is part of History Miami Museum's collection. It is on view in the exhibition Tropical Dreams. This helmet was created by the Miller Dunn Company, which was based in Miami. The Miller Dunn Company created shallow water helmets that were used by professional divers, the military, and recreational divers. Miller Dunn created three different style helmets, which they named Dive in Hood helmets. The first went on the market in 1916 and the last in 1937. The helmets improved with each new style. This helmet pictured here, along with the one in History Miami Museum's collection, is a Style 3 helmet. It's different from the other two styles for a few reasons. There are four windows, one in the front, one in the top, and one on either side. This allowed the diver to better see their surroundings. 
This style also has two external weights attached instead of the four weights that were used in style two. These weights were used to help balance and submerge the helmet. Another important change in the Style 3 helmet is the shape of the helmet. In the Style 3 helmet, the shape was altered to mirror the shape of a human head. History Miami Museum's helmet was donated by Raymond Bauer Jr. His family collected the helmet to display in their seafood restaurant, the Chesapeake, in Isla Mirada. The invention of the Miller Dunn Diving Hood had a widespread impact. Initially, William Dunn invented the diving helmet as a way to help find things that had fallen into the waterways in Miami. But others quickly developed more uses for it, such as scientific research, boat repairs, and underwater construction. Fittingly, the slogan for the diving hood was, a diving apparatus so simple anyone can use it. A dive and hood style 2 helmet was used by Dr. William Beebe in 1926. He was the director of tropical research at the New York Zoological Society. He realized the research potential for underwater study using diving helmets such as the dive and hood, and the modern field of marine biology was born. Sometimes people would create homemade open bottom helmets like the dive and hood from things that they had just around their home, such as a tea kettle. Today, diving takes many shapes and forms, and people do it for a bunch of different reasons. Commercial diving is a big field that includes offshore construction and maintenance. Public safety divers can be involved in underwater rescue missions. Many scientists utilize diving as an important part of their research. For example, oceanographers and marine biologists use diving to study the ocean and the wildlife that lives there. Underwater archaeologists excavate shipwrecks and submerged archaeological sites. One such scientist is Albert Jose Jones, a marine biologist who's passionate about diving. Dr. Jones founded and co-founded several organizations focusing on making diving more accessible and diverse. One of these is Diving with a Purpose, which is an international diving organization that focuses on submerged heritage preservation with a focus on the African diaspora. And it also educates and trains divers to conduct this research and preservation. Some athletes dive competitively. One amazing competitive diver is Estrella Navarro. Navarro was the first woman from Mexico to win a medal at the AIDA Individual Depth World Championships and has broken free diving records for Mexico 26 times. Lastly, many people go diving recreationally just to explore the world around them. Some organizations that are working to make diving more inclusive and accessible are Girls at Scuba, the Black Girls Dive Foundation, and Disabled Divers International. Thank you for joining me for another episode of Inside the Museum. For more information and more videos like this one, visit us at our website, www.historymiami.org.